the process of um, reworking the Liz character that comes with Anime Studio. And today I wanted to show you how I am currently uh, binding the points associated with the uh, torso. I wanted to do that because it's kind of difficult to get the binding to work in a way that looks nice, at least for me. Uh, so I wanted to share what I'm doing. Now for most layers like uh, the upper arm and lower arm, the legs and the head, um, I bind those to the um, layer. I do layer binding for most of the things. But for the torso, that's not going to work. So when I think about the torso in uh, the Liz uh, character, the layers are named shirt and also neck. And then we also have to take into consideration the skirt. Now we have to consider all three parts because they need to um, bend and move together because the shirt is going to match with the skirt and then it's going to match with the neck up here. Now for the torso we'll, or the uh, shirt, we'll start with that and I've just selected all the points just to show you the points. But I don't bind everything using flexi binding. Now that possibly could work well. Um, except for in my characters, what I am trying to do is I have the arm that rotates all the way around and I actually want this circle uh, that I have kind of as a patch um, to match exactly with the arm. Um, so I'm not going to go into that detail right now. I'm just saying that's the reason why I don't uh, flexi bind everything because I want the points on the shirt right around this shoulder area to match exactly with the movement of the um, shoulder as I move it at, or the upper arm. Uh, so one other point to mention this is not exactly a tutorial on how to do this but a description of what I'm doing to, that might be helpful to other people. So what I do is a combination of flexi binding and point binding. To show how the points are bound, I deselect everything. And the first thing that we can look at is, as we look at the bones themselves, we see that certain bones are kind of a pink color, and certain bones are kind of a dark uh, greenish blue color. These dark greenish blue color bones are the ones that are used for flexi binding. And so what I did to do the flexi binding is I select all of the points, and I uh, go to draw, uh, go to bone, and say flexi bind points. Now I haven't selected any, so it's not showing up now. Um, and then for selecting the bones, I select all of the bones that are that I want to use in flexi binding. And then I go to bone, and I say use selected bones for flexi binding. And then for the shoulders, what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I select these bones here. So these bones, my construction has collar bones, if you will. They, they don't match exactly with the collar, but they go to the shoulder from the chest. And when I select that bone, you will see that these bones right here are, I use point binding. Um, the way you do that is you select the bone, then you go to uh, this tool right here, the bind points tool, and you select the bone, uh, the points of interest, and then you click on the uh, bind points button. But to see which ones are bound there, I just click on the bone. And so these shoulder points are bound to this collarbone, and these other points are bound to the other one. Um, Now exactly which points I choose to bind to each bone is just a matter of trying to think about um, what I'm trying to do and a little bit of trial and error. Now one interesting point that I'll show here is that when I was actually doing the binding I actually made a mistake in the sense that I didn't flexibind all these uh, the shirt middle points first. I did the um, point binding first. And so the question is, how do I select all the other points? Oh no, I've got to loop through here, and which ones did I point? 
So the easy way to do that is select a bone, and when I select the bone, I see the points that are um, uh, point using point binding, and all I do is I do Shift Alt H for hide those points. Um, you can always do also do uh, draw hide selected points, and I'll show that for the other one. I'm going to select a bone, and these points are selected, the bound points are selected, so I go to draw, um, hide selected points, and it's Alt Shift H. So now that those uh, points are bound, now it's very easy to select all of the other points, and by doing that, I can easily, I could choose to um, flex it bind the points. Now for the neck, um, again, as we see, I've deselected everything, and the neck bone, the collarbones, and the chest bone are used for flexi binding, and I just happen to flexi bind all of the points. Now, if you don't know about this box here, you can just check it, and uh, the path or the curves will no longer show up, and that way, if you want to kind of see how things move without the bones and points in the way, that's what you can do. But now we can see that the points in the neck align well with those in the shirt, and so it looks like they move as a unit. And that happens because the points in the neck that are close to the points in the shirt are all bound using the same approach. And we do something very similar um, with the skirt. Notice that uh, I'm going to deselect all of the points, and we've got two bones that are used for flexi binding because I'm only flexi binding um, the points right up here near the um, uh, waist. Now the skirt's much more complicated because I use a mixture of flexi binding, um, point binding, and smart bones. Uh, but I'm still not quite satisfied, so I may come back with an uh, explanation on that later. But what we can see is uh, part of the skirt is point bound to one leg, part of the skirt is point bound to the other leg, and then the points around the waist are flexi bound just to these two bones. Now again, like I'm saying, that's what's important is that these points right here are bound in the same manner as the points in the shirt that are near there. If they're not bound in the same way, you'll get them moving apart. Now the last thing I'll show is you need to make sure you play with bone strengths. If you look, almost all of my bone strengths are turned off. Um, that's because I do layer binding for many things. Um, but around this torso, I'm going to use those bone strengths, including the collarbones and the neck bone and uh, so I just go to the bone layer and you can manipulate the body and then by playing with the bone strength you can see how they affect things. Notice if I make the uh, hip or the main root bone uh, different you can see how these things affect each other. So. That's how I have uh, bound the torso for this new uh, version of Liz. Uh, hope it's helpful.